the godfathers of Purdue fan sites, BoiledSports.com. This is Boiler Dowd's QuickCast. The next time you're on campus, stop by AJ's. Beer, sports, and Boiled Sports' favorite burger. EatAJ's.com. Mom, thanks for watching. Hope you're well. It's your boy B. Dowd. I wanted to give a little bit of a post-game wrap-up on the big victory over Oregon State. Saturday night at 7 p.m., your Boilermakers squared off against a Pac-12 foe and won 30-21. to It was a great effort all the way around and a pretty exciting game. There were a couple lapses in the game that were a little bit tough to swallow, but generally a very, very good, rec- uh, very good game for uh, Purdue and uh, a really good intro to the season of 2021. The more I think of it, the more I like this game, the more I feel better about this game, and I'll tell you why. First off, let me think. Let me tell you something. I think Oregon State is a pretty solid team. I know their record last year doesn't show much, but here's why I think that. Generally, bad teams hurt themselves. They make big mistakes. They do stupid stuff. But this Oregon State team, if you watched what I watched, you saw a team that didn't fumble a whole bunch. They put the ball on the ground one time, and Purdue did not recover it. They threw one interception. It was a great play by Cam Allen, cutting across the middle right before the end of the first half. It led directly to points, which was important for Purdue. And their defense was generally solid. Uh, Not a lot of stupid penalties. Um, They looked the part uh, in the trenches specifically. Their offensive and defensive lines were big and strong. Uh, Purdue struggled with them, I think, uh, quite a bit, especially initially. And then Purdue kind of got in a groove and things got better. But I don't think Oregon State is a bad team. And um, I think this was a very, very good first game for Purdue to get its feet under it, uh, to get some confidence, and to uh, learn a bit, a little bit about what's working and what's not working. Visit martinvintage.com, a longtime Boiled Sports sponsor and a friend of the website, that signature Martin Vintage comfort and classic Purdue graphics, martinvintage.com. If you're going to talk about positives of the game, you got to talk about Jack Plummer. Uh, Plummer finished the day with, he was 29 of 41, 313 yards, two TDs. Both of those TDs came in the fourth quarter, and specifically, he went 8 of 9 for 119 yards uh, in that fourth quarter alone. Both the TDs came to his roommate, uh, Payne Durham. Uh, Payne was excellent, and... um, very, very important for Purdue to finish that game out that way. Uh, I, I was extremely pleased with Plummer. He, Plummer looked like the guy that I thought he would look like years ago. Um, he looked poised. He was in control of the game. Um, his situational awareness was incredible. He did a couple of good things with his feet when the pocket collapsed. Um, Purdue's offensive line still seems to be a bit of a work in progress. That's understandable since you have so many new parts there. But at the same time, the offensive line shored up quite a bit after that really, really lousy first quarter. Purdue looked generally bad in the first quarter. Um, Offense looked bad. Defense was struggling. Uh, They didn't look like a team that was kind of all on the same page. But quickly they synced up, looked much better in the second quarter, Uh, looked generally better in the fourth quarter, but had parts of the third quarter that I wasn't real pleased with. They also had a drive in the fourth quarter where they went into – uh, a prevent type defense, and it did not pay off at all. Uh, Oregon State went right down the field on them. Specifically, had a long bomb where Trice looked into the quarterback on a pump. There was no safety back, and Trice was burnt pretty badly. And the uh, Cam Allen, I think, saved the touchdown if I'm remembering correctly, or maybe Trice did. Um, speaking of Trice and and Allen, uh, the defensive backfield generally looked very good, and Trice specifically looked great. My defensive players of the game. Um, I, I loved what Trice was doing. I thought he, uh, except for that one pay, play where he looked in, that like I just talked about, to the quarterback and bit the pump fake, Trice looked very, very good. Cam Allen looked solid. He's hitting people hard, has a, has that chip on his shoulder that I think Purdue fans have come to uh, know and love. Um, 
Uh, Graham was incredible. Uh, Graham was all over the field. Looks like he's growing into that linebacker role. Looked very, very good. Mitchell also had uh, a great game. Uh, he was very active. Both Mitchell, well, Mitchell, Graham, and Karloftis all lined up in this uh, kind of a sprinter stance and split way out at times. And every time they did it, it seemed like it got Oregon State's uh, uh, attention, uh, specifically their quarterback. When, when Karloftis was out there, uh, he got pretty nervous. And Karloftis, while he didn't have a, uh, a sack, I think he had eight pressures on the day. He was collapsing the pocket. That's something we haven't seen in years, literally years, uh, at Purdue. So that's really promising. I'm very confident there'll be some sacks next week versus UConn, uh, as UConn is quite uh, beaten up uh, mentally, physically. They just are not on the level that Purdue is. But Karloff has had a great game and was utilized very well. He also had one of the plays of the game in that Oregon State, um, they had no problem going for it on fourth. They had that... Uh, kind of uh, Swiss Army Knife player, Coletto, who's a linebacker by trade, but also plays running back in short yardage situations, returns kickoffs, uh, an incredibly versatile player, a very tough guy. Um, but Karloftis met him at the line of scrim scrimmage, stonewalled him, then pulled him back. And I think literally there are only probably two players on Purdue's team that could make that play. Karloftis did it with his strength, um, his offseason work, uh, really is paying off, shows shows that he's uh, he was ready this season. Xander Horvath had a good game, 21 carries, 81 yards, nearly four yards a carry. Uh, he had a touchdown. Um, I was really pleased with what I saw from Horvath, because especially in the first half when Purdue's offensive line was struggling, Horvath had to do a lot of work on his own, and uh, he, he looked very, very good. <laughs> GridironMetalworks.com, our pal Derek can help you find a gift for the person on your list who is really, really hard to shop for, Gridiron Metalworks makes great stuff. Grill grates, laser cut steel, it's macho. GridironMetalworks.com Some things that I didn't like, before I go a little further, um, uh, like you guys, you saw those three big drops by veteran uh, Purdue offensive players. One by Horvath, one by Payne Durham. Uh, and the third one, the big one by Milton Wright, where the ball was just put on the money by Plummer and it went right through his arms. These are curable things because I don't think any of those guys are poor receivers or bad receivers. Um, I think that uh, Purdue will get better at the, as the scene goes on and not drop as many balls in key times, but they've got to get better in a hurry. I think uh, playing UConn will be a good way to, to get back to where they need to be, and I think they will get there quickly. Uh, but... It was overall a very good effort. David Bell, of course, did what David Bell does. Eight receptions, 134 yards, had a touchdown taken from him by the officials who really weren't paying attention at all as an Oregon State defensive back uh, tackled him, ripped his right shoulder back before the ball got there. No idea how they missed that call, but they managed to do it. Um, uh, it, it, was a good, it was a good game for Purdue. Outside of what was happening on the field for our Boilers, there were some winners and losers. I'll tell you one thing I really liked at the game. Uh, my family got to. My family and I were there. Incredible to be back. I, I told you I might uh, shed a tear or two just to because I was happy to be back in Ross Aid, uh, and I did get choked up. Uh, incredible to be there uh, for the pregame. One thing that was really really cool in the new atmosphere. Uh, I don't know if you picked it up on TV. The new uh, the jumbotron, the the big screen in the. Uh, in the open end zone is just incredible. It's it's really big time looking. It's something that you, you need to see in person, honestly. So if you have season tickets or if you're planning on going to a game, uh, I think you'll love it. When they when they have the starting lineups up there, it looks really really cool. Uh, so that's a big improvement to the old game day atmosphere. Um, one thing that was not a big victory was the halftime show. The uh, and this is not the kids in the band's fault, but whoever chose to do a an homage to uh, to the Big Ten and play fight songs from the opposition was not not really thinking through the whole thing, and it was greeted with some boos. And I actually, I, I think it's, I, I hope the people in the band understand they weren't getting booed, but the choice of song was definitely getting booed. That was uh, unexplainable for me. I don't know why they did that. It's the Big Ten's 100th anniversary or something. It was the 500th game in Ross Aid. That's pretty cool. Uh, Purdue got the victory, and Jim Everett uh, was was featured throughout the day. He did a pregame speech on the big board and uh, also led Shout. I, of course, didn't see Shout. I don't do that. I leave during that portion, uh, just go down in the concourse, take a deep breath, whatever. I am not a fan of Shout. 
But Jim Everett uh, seems like, and I'm a huge Everett fan, by the way. We're buddies with Jim on Twitter. Uh, love being connected to him there. But uh, Jim seemed to have had a, an adult beverage or two. So he was, uh, he was enjoying himself. Uh, but anyway, pretty fun game. And um, uh, a lot of, you know, just being back in the stadium was an incredible experience in itself. John is in, is in shambles right now. They're an absolute mess. Um, earlier in a couple days ago, we saw that Randy Etzel was going to retire at the end of the season. Then very quickly, the next day, it changed from Randy Etzel retiring at the end of the season to being immediately done coaching. Uh, Randy Etzel is no longer UConn's coach. UConn is 0-2. Uh, they have uh, they got beaten up by uh, Holy Cross last week. And I don't think there's any reason for me to – I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I say – Purdue should handle their business quite easily versus um, versus UConn, and um, and that's my expectation. I am confident they will. I hope they come into the game with the idea, the game plan to end it early, to uh, really make their presence known. And I think they could do it almost just running the ball solely, maybe get a couple easy passes or uh, uh, one or two long passes after. Uh, telling UConn we're going to run, 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 and then maybe give Wright a chance to redeem himself on a long uh, uh, a fly route would be great. Um, Wright is a better receiver than what he showed last week. He didn't have the impact that I thought he would. I told you I thought he he would. Uh, he and Bell would combine for 200 yards. They fell short of that goal. But overall, uh, Purdue got a lot of things, a lot of boxes checked versus Oregon State. Um, like I said, UConn's next, and then Notre Dame at Notre Dame. Notre Dame played Florida State. Uh, did not look like the ninth best team in America, but um, I think Notre Dame's defense is going to be really tough to, to handle. Uh, they're always good. Their offense is um, not as good at this point, and I don't think they will be because I don't think they have a great quarterback. You guys heard my thoughts on, on Cone last week during the preview, but um, two games before Big Ten action starts, and a real good opportunity for Purdue to at least be two and one. Uh, if not, uh, you know, if they could steal the Notre Dame game, be three and zero, oh, I would just be uh, gobsmacked. That that would be incredible. Uh, but I'm really, I'm, I'm not in the camp that believes that that's going to happen. So thanks a lot for tuning in today. Uh, we're going to have some thoughts for you here uh, at the site uh, later on. We're probably going to have a, uh, a handsome hour on Wednesday or Thursday, and uh, maybe a little predicto action before Purdue heads to Connecticut to play on Saturday. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Hammer down, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. BS all the time.